tours, for instance, like really on full blown tours, you get to play bass, backing vocals, bass pedals, yeah. booty pedals. Yeah. How is that different to when you tour under the moniker of Los Trios Marillos with H and, and Rothery? Oh, it's a world of difference. Yeah, it's a world of difference. Um, I mean, I, you know, if, if I just went on stage and played bass, life would be so much simpler. You know? <laughs> and um, you get the, f you know, the thing is with Marillion, it's more of a performance related thing. Mm -hmm. And we have to try and, you know, project and put on a show. Uh, well, I, I always get the feeling that's what we have to do, whether we do or not, whether people would like us just to stand there and recreate the albums. I get the feeling people like to see a little bit more of a show from us. Mm -hmm. And um, you know, the thing about the bass pedals and the, and the MIDI pedals, they become a bit of a necessity because to try and recreate what we do in yeah. a studio, you need loads of pairs of hands, you know, <laughs> you need more pairs of hands than we have uh, put together. So, so you know, you'll get the stage where Steve will be playing guitar or half a song and then sit down at the piano, you know, yeah. for the other half of the song. Just to enhance, so that Mark can do other things, mm -hmm. and I'll be, I'll be triggering. Sometimes I'll be triggering samples. Sometimes I'm playing the key part, or mm -hmm. or, or or we sometimes MIDI up, layer up um, chords, so that when I'm playing one note, I can play a chord mm -hmm. against what Mark's doing. You know, it just frees up Mark's hands really, mm -hmm. and he can play the principal parts that he wants to play. But when you play in a trio format, and you're playing, but yeah, entire, it's just other sense having you think. There's a huge, there's a huge hole here that needs to be filled, or you don't have. Well, no, and the reason why we don't feel like that is because we deliberately rearrange the songs mm -hmm. in such a way. You know, we strip them right back to the bare minimum, which is, uh, you know, we, the bare minimum is the voice, really, and you know what you can get away with just by singing or or having you know one instrument or maybe just one note against the vocal. Um, that's what we try and do. So we, we only bring things in um, when, when they're required. Um, and we're very minimalistic in our approach to, to the music. Mm -hmm. And you know, sometimes that, that forces us to rearrange a song, which is great. And yeah. at other times, it allows us just to get back to the heart and soul of, of what the song is all about. Mm -hmm. And it gives Steve, because it's a lot quieter environment, to and it's and it's much more it's much more intimate you know people just see us almost as we would be in our in, sitting around in our studio or just on a sofa just playing to each other you mm -hmm. know and working out a song almost and you that's the kind of vibe we try and create and it allows Steve a lot more freedom with his vocals how he wants to approach it you know he can whisper a verse if he wants to and you'll never do that in a live situation because mm -hmm. the noise level is just too much. <laughs> My bass needs to be compressed quite a bit because I'm a bit slap happy when it comes to playing. Mm -hmm. You know, I don't have a great technique. I've never, I've never claimed to have a great technique. I'm pretty good at what I do, but I'm not. You know, but I don't know. <laughs> I, I haven't got. Some people I haven't got the, the you know the best technique in the world. So so yeah, I do need to. Compress. Some people don't. You know, some people can just play really smoothly all day long, and <laughs> uh, you've got to admire that. But then that's a different. That's a different kind of. Uh, Approach. Approach. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay. Um, the um, horrible question. Ten years ago, uh, a fan comes near you in a stadium gig in Madrid in a festival. You were playing with Bruce Dickinson and Nathan Beth and Pitchy Green. Someone comes. A fan comes near you and asks you, uh, "Will you ever do something with Fish?" And your answer is, "You answer the equivalent of over my dead body or." Oh my yeah, dead. I did, didn't I? <laughs> <laughs> and there we are, ten years later. Were you somehow concerned that um, once you decided to play with Fish this year, mm -hmm. uh, sadly all the websites and all the forums would be floated with Marillion reunion threats? No, actually, I didn't. I didn't um, it's been something that everybody's wanted us to try and do. Uh, and, uh, you know, I think I think what we were trying to achieve doing the, uh, the gig with Fish, you know, from, from my point of view, what I was trying to achieve was just dispel the myth, Yeah. really, and then we've done it now, Yeah. and that's it, and that's that's kind of a thing as far as I'd like to take it, really, it was a one-off thing, I mean, you know, uh, primarily what happened was that Fish, Fish was asked to do 
um, a, a little gig called Hobbles on the Cobbles, which is in my hometown, yeah, uh, Elfbury, which is where we all got together, and I, I, I still live there. And so, you know, my, you know, the old singer of, of, of the band was going to play in my, in, in my hometown. I, I was going to go along and see him anyway. anyway. And, and, but, but while we were in Glasgow earlier this year on the Somewhere Else tour, he asked if the rest of us would come along and, and, and play a song. And um, we thought, well, you know, I guess it would seem odd to say no. I think, you know, I mean, he did very well out of it because he made quite a lot out, um, you know, there was quite a lot of footage, yeah. and quite a lot of press out of it for him. Um, the interesting thing probably was Probably more positive for him than for us. I think we tend to see um, anything to do with us and Fish as negative press, simply because, you know, we've moved on, we're trying to, we're trying to stay moved on, you know. Mm. And there's enough people out there that, that don't need that kind of ammunition to, to be hounding us about with the fish thing. Mm. Uh, but most people, and most people that follow the band now, um, you know, don't really, don't really get that excited about them. The yeah, I think the, that's the, 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 the idea of us and fish being together. It's different. I think that's, that's and the it's thing. a very different band. You know, it's a very different thing now. And. Uh, and that's that's good, you know. That's a good thing, and it should be seen as a good thing because, you know, you can't you can't really live in your past. Mm -hmm. You can go back to where I mean, I went back to one of the places I used to go on holiday um, when I was a kid. And that's a child. Well there. And you know, you can go back there and visit, but it's never going to be the same. Mm -hmm. Yeah. A apart from a, this is maybe you know, maybe Led Zeppelin. Yeah. Couldn't recapture it. I don't know. They played last night, didn't they? And apparently it was a huge success. That's why I went to ask because I haven't seen any of the footage. But that's a very different thing because, you know, um, that's that's one of those kind of reunion things. Mm -hmm. And the um, the corporate musical world seems to love that at the moment. You know, which is which is great, and it's a good way of phone companies and drinks companies and telecommunications companies to all get together. And, and do something huge and everyone can make loads of money out of it and it's great and the poor old fans get stumped for you know a hundred pounds a ticket for this and I don't know I don't know who can afford to go to those kind of shows these and days. then buying the whole catalogue as a double yeah, that's what we have to do with